Today's a big day. What are we doing? I'm going to get tires. For what wheels? The M-Pars. All right, you know the slang, all right. Yeah, guys, today we're gonna go get tires for these new wheels. I don't know, I don't think I showed you guys yet, but we got these M-Parallels for her E46. Now that she's looking all low, she needs to look a little bit better. She can't be sitting on stockies, so. Got these M-Parallels, we got them for a good deal. These are a staggered set from an E38. The good thing about these E38 wheels is they have the same hub bore as an E46. That way you don't gotta get like the freaking uh, hub centric rings and stuff like that. And I know we're gonna have to do a little bit of modifications to possibly the rear fenders to make these things fit. So let's head to the tire shop. So these wheels right here, 18 by eight plus 13, 18 by nine and a half plus 25, style 37 M parallel. So on the front, the 18 by eight, the internet said to get a 225 40 18, and then on the rears, 18 by nine and a half, I got a 235 40 18. So there is an alternative. You can either get a 235 40 or a 255 35. A 255 35 would be a little smaller. I want something a little taller, so she has a little bit more comfort in her ride. See, it's got a tiny stretch to it, not a lot actually, not a lot at all, but it has these curb protectors on it which it makes the edge of the tire like thicker. So it's kinda, it's gonna be a little rough on the clearance. So we're actually just gonna go ahead and jack one side of the car up and just put the wheels on. That way I can see if I need to find a fender roller. This is a 205 55 16. So for comparison, we're gonna take this and put it next to the 235 40 for the rear. So the goal was to have a tire that was a tiny bit taller because since I lowered this car for her, this will make the car still a little bit higher because it's, it's pretty freaking low right now. I'd say about half an inch, half an inch height difference. So that's good. That's why we got the 235s. If we got the 255s, it would have been around the same height. Another E46 on M pars. Just have to get them out. I can see exactly where it hits. Hits right here. Oh, my zip tie job. Right on your zip tie. We're gonna need to go in there and shape that. We're gonna need to roll the fender or cut it, but I think we should just roll it. Because if it's got some tire poke, so if we roll it, it'll kind of get rid of some of that tire poke. So the rear is good. We just need a little bit of roll. Let's get to the front. 205.55 to a 225.40. These. Just about the exact same height because if this tire was new, it would be a little taller. I'd say this one's a tiny bit taller. Just a tiny bit. So that's good. The E38 M parallels are just the perfect, perfect wheel for the E46. Perfect. Drop it down. Oh my God, they're way too big. Uh oh. <laughs> Someone said get 215 40, 225 40. I should have listened. Nothing a little fender roll can handle. I'm just worried because I'm not driving the car, someone else is. This is perfect for me. I would actually lower the car a little bit more. Fired up, let's roll. We're gonna go take it for a putt. Self clearancing. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, so far we have rubbing on three corners. We gotta wait for this one. So this one's not rubbing yet. Ooh. Don't worry. We are going to clearance this. She rubs everywhere now. Hey, we are in Tucky! Woo! Alright guys, here's the deal. We have two options. We gotta either roll this lip or cut it. These are on drop springs. It's not that stiff. We're gonna have a lot of wheel travel. So I think I'm just gonna cut it, but that's just for the back. You know, we'll cut it and then we'll shave the bumper tab. That way um, it doesn't rub. But for the front, the tire is almost rubbing just as it sits. Now, I do have the fender roller, so we are going to roll in the fender lip and we are going to pull the fender just a little bit, not a lot. And uh, we'll see how that does in the front. We're gonna put it in the driveway and then Pull the wheel off and we're going to come up with a plan of attack on cutting these fenders.
Okay guys, here's the deal. You can already see where it's rubbing right there on the lip. So either we roll it or we cut it. And then right here, that's where the bumper tab is. So we already know what we gotta do there. We gotta trim it. It looks like someone already stuck it like a self tapper through here. We are going to check that out. We're gonna pull this plastic piece out just to see um, how much we have to trim, who knows. We might just trim this plastic piece a little bit, maybe like from here down to here, just to get this chunk out. Let's see what we gotta do. Here we go. One-handed. I'm making a mess already. Yeah, so there's a bunch of fuel, fuel tank stuff there, so we definitely have to leave that there, but we have to find out what we can get rid of. I'm thinking that we're just gonna take this nut off and cut the stud off, because we don't freaking need that. And then right where this self-tapper is, I think we're just gonna put a zip tie there just because it, it'll be fine. There's like this crazy amount of like, I don't know, it's epoxy or type of seam sealer in here. It's like really hard and really rugged. So what I think I'm just gonna do is not even just take it out, just start cutting. Only because if I do take that out, it's gonna A, make a mess and B, it's just gonna take forever and we're not even gonna roll the fenders. If you're gonna roll the fenders, you wanna make sure you do a good job and take that out. but. I think what I'm gonna do is just, I'll cut it a little long, and then what I'll do is I'll actually take the grinder and grind it down. So when you're on the outside, you can't tell anything has been done. So I'll probably cut all the way from this tab right here, all the way, maybe like down here, and then I'll walk it from the inside to the outside, make it nice and clean. After that, we got a good old brushable seam sealer that I've used on many, many, many projects. So we'll take the brushable seam sealer. Now that there's gonna be an open seam, we will close that up with seam sealer. Do it legit, you know what I'm saying? We're just going to start cutting. Okay guys, here is our inner fender. As you can see, some of it we kind of cut a little thin, some of it we cut a little thicker. Um, I just didn't want to cut too far out because sometimes if you think you got it, you really don't and you will be able to see it on the outside. So um, I'm actually just going to go cut the other side and then I'm going to throw the grinder wheel on and I'm going to finish it off and just keep grinding it and grinding it. But as you can see, none of the epoxy is actually on here. This is the main area where it rubs. So we're going to get rid of that, but we'll do that with the grinder. There's a plastic piece right here. And it goes like this and it kind of sits under the lip of your bumper you don't freaking need it so i took the nut out oh shit right, the camera's dirty so i took the nut out right here and there's a stud cut the stud off broke this off but i left it back here because we're still going to put that uh that plastic liner back in and then like i said we're just going to drill a freaking hole right back here somewhere and we'll just put a zip tie just to hold that in that way it's not sticking out like that the lip is completely gone it feels good but now we have a gap because there's two pieces of metal that the lip held on by spot welds so let's see you can see right here something called spot weld what it does is it pinches two pieces of metal together and when you cut it you're cutting that spot weld now you have two pieces of metal that are chilling and then you get water in there, it's gonna start rusting and stuff like that. So that's what the seam sealer is for. So when we're done with that, throw some seam sealer in there. My guy Chris decided to come over and uh, this guy can't come over without getting his hands dirty. He already knows that. <laughs> but luckily I gave him the easy job. Well, it's not, I guess it's not easy. As long as you know how to roll fenders, it's easy. So we got a fender roller, my boys over here rolling the freaking fenders. Now we're not gonna, it's not really a how to on that, but basically what you wanna do is take the freaking roller push it up against the lip at an angle, fold it up, and then after that, you can you can pull it out if you want, but that's that's really up to you. Me, I told him, Chris, give me a roll, give me a slight pull to see if we can clear these freaking 225s on there. My boy's looking like he's getting a little sun. You need some shade, bro, or what? No, I'm good. <laughs> <He's sick. laughs> we're just gonna let him, we're gonna let him keep rolling. I'll, I'll put a time lapse on him while I keep working on the back.
So we just about got the whole freaking uh, fender edge lip cut off. And then we even cut this off. So we cut that off. We're just gonna end up drilling a hole somewhere back here and putting a zip tie just to keep this from kind of flip flapping around. <laughs> so hopefully, if our wheel doesn't clear that, then, then we got other problems. I grinded all the metal down. We're gonna put a fresh coat of seam sealer. I got freaking bolts in my ears, trying to not hurt my ears because the grinding with my head in the fender wall, it was bad. So yeah, we're gonna do the zip ties and then we're gonna put those pieces back on. We're gonna drop the car back on the ground. Chris just finished with the fender rolling. So everything looks good in there. The only problem is the fender liner is now just sitting in the fender. So maybe we'll throw a zip tie in the fender just so this liner doesn't uh, have problems. And if it does have problems, we'll just freaking rip it out. My boy Chris did a really good job. He said he hasn't rolled fenders in a couple years. Look at him. He's trying to be cool. We all know he sucks. You suck. Give me your best trick. Best trick. Don't fuck up. Damn, bro. That was only your only minute of fame. That was it. I'm not gonna talk shit, you rolled my fenders for me. We're just gonna get this puppy back on the ground. We're gonna drive around the block because I'm curious to see if it's gonna rub or not because we just did about three and a half hours worth of work to this thing. Cool, yeah, hit it. Oh, floor out of the driveway. Actually, it won't rub. Yeah, bro, about that lie. Just wait till we get off the block and then I want you to do some maneuvers. <laughs> okay, do the other way. Oh yeah, rear left for sure. We gotta do something there. Oh, we're looking good. We got all the clearance. Okay, how about the front? Okay, we're feeling good. Uh, hang a left. If you look, fender to wheel, this side, compared to this side, this wheel's poking out a little bit more. Can you adjust camber on the back of these cars? Slightly. Slightly, huh? Yeah, so I get it aligned. Get everything yeah but if i align it they might put the camera to factory bro well yeah at least they it's... might make it worse and it's gonna rub on both sides and pars <laughs> <laughs> okay so the car is back from the test drive it did good but it was rubbing a little bit right here we noticed it's the bumper from because like why is it tied i think i tightened it too much but what we did to offset that was we pulled this piece out a little bit and we pulled just a tiny little pull to kind of even out both sides of the quarter panel. And we did that with the damn jack handle. So what we did, we put it here, lowered the car just a tiny bit, and we kind of just rolled it along. And then right here we did one of these, but like obviously slower, you know, just to kind of pull this puppy out a little bit is because we could tell it was actually rubbing a lot right there. So, God, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And my boy Chris, he rolled that side a little bit more than this side, and that side was perfect. So I was like, bro, can I trouble you to even it out? And he said, yes, so cool. If I could do this over again, I would do a 215 40 18 in the front on the 18 by eights. And I would do a 225 40 on the 18 by nine and a halves. That way you don't have to do all of this crazy work and you could probably get away with doing nothing. I went with a little bit fatter tires because this is a daily driven car and I want, <laughs> want to be more comfortable. And occasionally when I steal this car from my girlfriend, I take it to the canyons, you know, we can do a little bit of automotive brushable seam sealer. Now you can get this stuff in a, in a tub like this or you can get it in a tube of caulking and you can use a caulking gun. But me, I already had this, so this is what I use. So the thing for the seam sealer is you want it to be protected from A, water, B, tire smoke, C, debris. So you pretty much want to get the seam sealer just where the two pieces of metal separated. You want to get it there. And you should primer it before, but I did not. Anyways, guys, I want to thank you for watching this video on um, installing MPARs and cutting our rear fenders and rolling our front fenders. If you guys want to see more on the C46, let me know. It is not mine, but I will keep on working on it if you guys like it. So I want to thank you guys for watching. This is Aisha Hunter Garza and... Thanks for watching. Peace out.